We're chatting with Derek Romnerace. Derek is a well-known musician in the area, from fronting the college band Hooch in the early 2000s, to the Soapbox Project, to the newest iteration of his band, Old Soul Society. Derek shares his experience of being a musician during COVID, with the increase of his creative output and even live streaming on top of Devil's Lake in Baraboo, Wisconsin. I'm Amy, and he's Brent, and this is Lacrosse Local. My name is Derek Romnerace, and I was born actually in Fort Riley, Kansas. My parents always listened to music, so I always had stuff around, and um, I got a guitar finally and spent a lot of time. I played piano a little bit first. Once I got a guitar, I, I really sat and spent most of my time with it, and I think because I didn't have any any lessons, and I didn't know how to play anything is how I became a songwriter because I had to make up my own stuff. So you've been playing in one form or another throughout the lacrosse area for a number of years. I've seen you dozens of times. Most currently you have been playing with the band Old Soul Society. What was the impetus for that band? When I was in lacrosse in the early 2000s, I had a band called Hooch and that was like a, a rock and roll reggae blues kind of a non-genre specific actually genre defying but um after i was done with that group i formed another group called the soapbox project it was kind of an extension of the same thing but all the while i'd been writing these other songs that were kind of more folk based maybe some more ballady type stuff and and certainly a lot low key and low energy and nothing like what i was doing so they didn't really have a home and after a while, they just started building up, and I, I felt I needed to do something with them. I started writing more stuff in that vein as well. I gave up drinking about six and a half years ago, and that was a motivator for me to pour myself into something else, kind of a replacement addiction, if you will. <laughs> but uh, that was basically what it was. I mean, I just I had a lot of material that I felt like I was wasting and not doing anything with that I thought was pretty good, and my style in general, just where I was at in life had changed so went for it and uh it's been good even that even this band has evolved though I and mean, we started out as just piano guitar and three-part harmonies and so we can evolve to being a full band acoustic or a full band electric or just a duo or a trio or whatever so that's been uh been a neat aspect to it all seeing the, a number of your live shows different iterations of the bands you have a very powerful stage presence they're great live performances how has uh, this recent pandemic been with the onset of COVID-19? How has your show adapted? Wow, it's it's been really, really unusual because uh, my whole thing has been, I very much rely on um, an energy exchange within the people at the venues and within my bandmates as well. But um, the room and the energy of the room and the people that are in the room makes what we do come to life. And so to have that rug kind of pulled out from under us and suddenly to be sitting in my living room playing to my wall, it certainly lacked that exchange. I mean, that's how I write songs, but it's different when you know that there's, you know, there's an engagement still happening. So I felt very disconnected for a long time with it all. I started getting better video, better audio going on. And then, um, and I also noticed an uptick in how many people were paying more attention to my original music where they were removed from that bar type of crowd or the distractions that come along with being at a live venue type of situation. So it's motivated me now to focus more on my, my legacy and my body of work and my actual recordings and having materials that will sustain and last long before I do. <laughs> I guess an example of this, you did a, a day long of live streams around your hometown, including uh, visiting the top of Devil's Lake. Yeah. I know that's something that we put on, just had it playing around the house. How did that come about? There was a lot of different factors to it. One was that in my quest to kind of get more acclimated with higher quality recordings and higher quality audio video for the streams, a friend of mine who has a company called Aspect Multimedia has this thing. It's, uh, it's called a Mix Pre. Basically, it's a battery powered, super high quality audio recorder. I was able to hook my phone directly into it. Yeah, I just I just wanted to do something different. I wanted to get out of my living room. I could finally kind of start moving around without people, uh, you know, looking at me like I was crazy for being outside of my house. And uh, so I really just needed to get out, I think. 
I live in Baraboo, but I really, for the last several years, I haven't really spent much time in Baraboo. I mean, I, I travel a lot. So when I'm home doing stuff with my kids or gone or just like working on things at home. So I don't really get out and roam around as much. And there are a lot of places around here that I do really love. The bluff thing was I've always taken guitars up and played up there and I grew up in that environment. So it, it's a very special place to me and to be able to kind of share that view and that experience with some other people was something I was really excited about. I was just going to do a few songs, but I ended up playing like an hour set. People, <laughs> I had my guitar case sitting up against a tree off by the trail and people were like unlatching my case, putting money in it and then closing it and latching it back up again. <laughs> so I didn't even have it set up for tips but I got some. It's been kind of interesting to see how musicians have moved online. Take your band, for instance, me living my own life, but going out to see live music is, uh, you know, maybe a once every three months thing. And during this time period, I've seen more music streamed live or live music over the internet than I would normally see in a whole year. I'm sure it's, it is a struggle for a lot of musicians out there, but kind of develop that audience in a different aspect, I guess. A really different kind of connection that we're making with people, that's for sure. I didn't like it at first, but I found comfort in it. You recently did a video for Fleeting Thought. I spend most of my time Waiting for someone like you To come into my life Just to fix me up and make me new. So it was a song that originally never made it past a demo. How did it go from like gathering dust to just putting that out in pretty quick succession, I believe? Yeah, it was a it was a quick process. Well, Dylan Overhouse is a very talented photographer, videographer, producer from Lacrosse. We developed a relationship just because I noticed his work and I noticed I noticed him at a couple of our gigs and I'd see how he would be real patient as far as, um, well, a lot of photographers will just rattle off like thousands of shots and then they'll try to go through and edit them or pick out a couple of good ones. And I, a lot of times what happens when you get into sheer numbers like that, you miss the good ones when you're looking through them, you know what I mean? You actually miss these things. So I saw Dylan kind of being patient, waiting for the shots and, so I, I contacted him and I told him I really respected his work and his work ethic and his vision. And um, through that, we developed a relationship and we were just talking and he had this idea he wanted to do. And, you know, when the, everything got shut down, you know how crazy it is to see Pearl Street with no cars on it. And so there was just this real dissonant feeling anyways of being there and he had been wanting to shoot some stuff where we actually shoot it at two and a half times the speed. And then when you play it it looks really slow and really just kind of has a, a strange feel to it and then it was a matter of just finding the right song and I didn't have any recordings that were finished that could kind of work with the tempo because we do record it at such a fast speed it's nearly impossible to sing some of my standard songs at that speed I just like hey man I've got some stuff that you know we never did anything with and I pulled out some old demos I sent him some files and he was like, I think this one will be great for it, actually. And everything about that moment just seemed to collide perfectly. The feeling of the video, the way he shot it, the strangeness of the location. To be able to walk down Pearl Street and not get smoked by a car is kind of amazing, you know. And then the lyrical content also, it all lended itself to this kind of isolated confusion that I think a lot of people felt. And so it, it seemed to resonate pretty well. Yeah, I mean, literally, he told me the concept, sent me the sped up version of it. I hopped in my van, I drove up to lacrosse, I listened to the sped up version a couple of times, tried to uh, Elvin the Chipmunk it, showed up, hit my mark, and we shot it three times. And the next day, he sent me, uh, sent me the cuts, and I was, I was shocked. His vision is incredible. What's next for you? I'm working on a new album. I actually, uh, I was just getting pre-production together for a new record with the band. And now we're kind of redirecting this whole thing because I've actually written more stuff in the last two months than I wrote in the whole last two years. I still believe very strongly in the concept of album, of putting something on and listening to it from start to end and how the whole thing flows together song to song. It's all part of a ride, you know, and I do a festival every summer and most 
got canceled, but they do, the venue still wants to do a much smaller version of this festival. So I've been kind of redoing that right now. We're trying to work out a multi-camera live stream. So we want to be able to do it to, to provide entertainment for the people who they have on site anyways. And then we also want to live stream it so that uh, people know that they don't have to come to see the show. They can stay and watch it from the safety of their own homes. Lacrosse Local Podcast is a production of River Travel Media. Do you have an interview idea you would like to share with us? Message us on Facebook at Lacrosse Locals. Subscribe to the Lacrosse Local Podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you like us, rate us five stars. We thank you for it.